In terms of uh, the uh, Terra Incognita essay for this issue of the Core Gap Bulletin, we focused on the question of uh, amidst all this revolutionary tumult going on around the world, it's not just North Africa. A lot of other contested uh, elections and presidential standoffs and strong men being ousted elsewhere uh, or being threatened to, to be ousted elsewhere. Uh, what does the West or the great powers of the system do with despots who refuse to leave? Now the realist position uh, classically is um, you bargain with them. You offer them immunity, you get them out of the country, and you get the bloodshed over as quickly as possible. The idealist position more in uh, concert with the the growth and the rise of international norms, the international criminal court concept and those, those sorts of things very much argues for the, uh, the putting them on trial. And what we see uh, going on in the various situations we're tracking now, there are a few precedents that really work across uh, borders because each situation tends to be fairly unique. For example, a lot of people talk about the utility of the Truth Commission approach that was uh, uh, pursued by South Africa following apartheid. Uh, and yet that system doesn't always uh, uh, pertain uh, to the same uh, feasibility in other systems. What is clear though is that uh, if you do want to avoid the trial and the whole truth commission sort of approach and you want to move on to the reconstruction as quickly as possible, not drag out the kind of zero-sum politics that can very possibly ensue in those sorts of dynamics, you need to get the leadership, the leadership family indeed, uh, out of the country as quickly as possible, or eventually the revolutionary uh, elements do turn on them uh, and look to have trials, and we're seeing that precedent being uh, established uh, in the Arab uh, environment right now with the question of Mubarak's in, um, in Egypt, uh, Father Hosni and Son Gamal both uh, basically in jail, uh, and both facing the possibility of public trials and even the potentiality of being uh, uh, put to death on the basis of crimes committed. Uh, and that wouldn't be that much out of the norm. Of course, uh, Iraq did the same thing with Saddam Hussein under U.S. blessing. Uh, but it does establish kind of a negative precedent in terms of the ongoing dynamics uh, elsewhere. Uh, obviously, uh, the war crimes threat has been put on the table very quickly by the Western leadership uh, in terms of uh, Gaddafi and Libya. Uh, and we saw even with the deal that was recently uh, forged between uh, the Saleh in Yemen and, and the opposition, that fell apart when the youth movement uh, made the demand that uh, uh, no immunity be offered to Saleh and his family. Uh, so with the Iraq example, the Libyan uh, uh, stalemate now, uh, and the continuing uh, stalemate in terms of Saleh in Yemen, uh, you see this danger in making kind of strong threats and ruling out the possibility of immunity. Uh, you get this kind of bitter ender fight um, that can uh, resurrect itself uh, for months or years following the event. Uh, for example, in the Ivory Coast, uh, where uh, Bagbo recently was deposed violently by um, the winner of the election uh, last December, who represents kind of a Muslim North. Uh, you can see the possibility of a, a north-south split there and the removal of uh, civil war. So in all these questions, very delicate to try to figure out, uh, do you move the leader out of the country? Do you put him on trial? What's the best approach in terms of the unity? Uh, what's clear is uh, there are no easy uh, precedents to follow. And again, each situation tends to be fairly unique.